Hi, I'm Otto Pensler. I'm at the Mysterious Bookshop in Manhattan. And today I'm gonna to talk about one of the best crime writers of uh, the, the last, I'm gonna say 40 years. Um, and one of the really terrific human beings that I came to know over time. <clears throat> Pardon me, Robert B. Parker. Um, Bob started out <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, everybody thinks his first book is the God Wolf Manuscript, which I have here, and I'll show you more of this in just a second. But in fact, his first book is extremely rare. It preceded this by several years. It's a book on bodybuilding. It was published by Sports Illustrated, and in all the years that I collected him, the best I could do was find a fifth printing. It must have had 10 printings, probably more successful than any of his books about Spencer. Uh, but uh, I don't have a copy to show you because it's so rare. And chances are, since we're talking about mystery fiction here, you don't really care anyway. But anyway, this is, uh, this is his first mystery, the God Wolf Manuscript. And as was true of all his early, of his early books, it was published by Houghton Mifflin in Boston in 1974, and there's the title page. And Houghton Mifflin was very good about letting you know a first printing because there's the copyright page. And look, it says first printing. It takes all the suspense out. The, the Spencer character that he created here has become an icon. You know, in the history of hard-boiled private eye fiction, there was a real, uh, a, 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 a chain that was unbroken, that went from Dashiell Hammett, who essentially popularized the form, to Raymond Chandler, to Ross MacDonald. Ross MacDonald tried to write Chandler-esque stories. His early books, he was emulating Chandler, and he became the creator of Lou Archer and a tremendously successful writer in his own life. Bob Parker, then followed in the footsteps and tried to write like Ross MacDonald. And in fact, his doctoral thesis was about hard-boiled writers. <clears throat> and there were, of course, Mickey Spillane was in, in between, uh, but he, he was generally not regarded as a great writer the way Hammett, Chandler, MacDonald, and Parker were. Uh, this is his second, this is Parker's second book. Again, Houghton Mifflin. And again, we'll show you the title page, 70, 1974. His second book came out the same year as the God Wolf Manuscript. And again, on the, the copyright page, there it says first printing. Now this book is signed, and I'm gonna show you arguably the worst signature in the history of crime fiction. There it is. Now, I was here when he was signing books. He, he came to sign virtually all of his books at the Mysterious Bookshop. And um, somebody said, would you write it differently so that I could actually read your signature? And Bob said, sure, but that's not my signature. And so, <clears throat> so it was an exercise in futility to try to get something uh, that looked like a real signature. Here's his third book, Mortal Stakes. Bob was a big baseball fan, and this was a, uh, a baseball-based mystery. Again, Houghton Mifflin, again. They changed now, as, as time went by, they changed from that uh, showing the first printing to what has become a very common way of showing first printings, which is a number line that begins with one. And if the one is missing, it means it's a second printing or third printing, whatever number you see on the screen. His fourth book, again, Houghton Mifflin, 1976, Promised Land. There's the number sequence to show you that it's a first edition. And this one, The Edgar, as the best, best novel of the year. His next book, Judas Goat, this is his fifth book, and it's his last book with, um, with Houghton Mifflin.
1978. There's the copyright page. There's the number line going from one. And here's that incredible signature again, which you, you have to take my word for it. That's a signature. Um, all of these books are about $100 or a little bit more, uh, especially for the very early scarce books. <clears throat> he also wrote a short story called Surrogate that was then published by a small press out in California called, called Lord John Press. Uh, this is a story that Playboy commissioned, <clears throat> and then they didn't like it, and they killed it. So the man who was running Lord John Press in 1982 found the story and asked if he could print it separately in this little book, which he did. This is the trade edition, which is, I think, limited to 300 copies. Let me just check on the, uh, on the limitation page. Yeah, 300 copies. This is copy number 196 of 300. There are also a small number of, of copies, uh, 50 copies, which were bound in leather, uh, which are quite collected because anybody who wants a complete Spencer collection wants this book. Uh, and this is, this is a perfect copy. It's $350. The leather edition is about twice as much as that. Uh, with his success, he then was eventually found himself at Putnam, where you see these at much larger format, you know, compared to what they were when he was with Houghton Mifflin. They're bigger, they're much fatter, but they're, the, they're actually the same length. They just look like more because they used a heavier paper, a little more space on the page. Look how much space there is on these pages. So it makes it look like, oh, he's written a much longer, bigger book, but they're the same length as, as, uh, as the ones that he wrote for Houghton Mifflin. Um, here's this, they again, like, like the last uh, of the Houghton Mifflin books, you can see that they use the number sequence uh, to show first edition. <clears throat> he, um, his publisher, uh, between Houghton Mifflin and Putnam, Delacourt published him for a short time, and uh, they wanted him to write a longer, a longer book. They said, write something bigger and more substantial. <clears throat> and he tried. He wrote a book called Catskill Eagle, which was about 50% longer. Generally not regarded as his best book. And he finally said, I tried to write longer. It doesn't get better. It's just what it is. It's the best I could do. <clears throat> uh, when, when Bob died, the Spencer character and his other characters had become so successful as a television series um, and in, in sales of books that other writers were then hired to continue the series. It's very rare for that to happen. It happened with Ian Fleming and James Bond. Of course, it happened with Sherlock Holmes but there are very, very few examples of this in later years. But here's <clears throat> Ace Atkins, did a terrific job uh, writing the Spencer series. Uh, what's remarkable is, is that Ace Atkins uh, lives in the South, uh, lives in Mississippi, and uh, he still got Boston perfectly right. I mean, he did study at Boston, so he was familiar with the city, but he got the tone of it, and the, uh, uh, the, the speech cadences, uh, which are very different in Boston than they are in the South, but he got it right. He did a really great job. Uh, for the Jesse Stone series, Michael Bremen came along and continued that series. And then Reed Farrell Coleman continued the Jesse Stone series. All published by Putnam, by the way. Um, he, well, Bob was famous for writing mystery fiction, of course, and um, the, especially the Spencer series. He also wrote other books from time to time. And uh, this is a book called Three Weeks in Spring, and it's about his wife's battle with cancer. It's really a love story. And it's because the publisher did not expect a whole lot to come uh, from this book. 
uh, is fairly scarce because they printed far fewer, <clears throat> uh, excuse me again, uh, for, uh, for this book than they did for others. So it's uh, pretty uncommon. Uh, this is a remarkable copy. I'll show it to you because um, it's signed by Bob Parker and Joan, his wife, who survived that, that fight with cancer. Uh, this was in the, this was 1978, and it was just a couple of years before that that she recovered uh, from that. And again, there's the number sequence. There are almost no copies of this book signed by both Joan and Bob. They're both credited for having written it. A couple of oddities that I have. Um, I published a, uh, a, a book version of Raymond Chandler's <clears throat> screenplay for playback. And uh, I asked Bob to write an introduction to it, which he did. And we published this little pamphlet in advance, well in advance of the book to pr pr uh, protect the book with cop for copyright purposes. And uh, we only printed 25 copies. So it's quite rare. This is what I mentioned early, saying that he wrote his doctoral thesis on private eyes, uh, specifically Hammett and Chandler, and here it is published in, in this edition. Very small quantity, I think, I, I, never, I used to remember every limitation of every single book ever published, but not this one. Uh, it's 300 copies, and there's the, the copyright or, or the limitation page. And it's, and it's readable. It's a doctoral thesis, but it's very readable. And of course, all the copies were signed. And this was early when you could actually make out his signature before he became, well, sort of, you could sort of make it out <laughs> before he was signing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books and it became tighter and tighter as much as it could. And this is a lovely book. This is uh, Parker on writing. It's a, just a fascinating essay. It also has a limitation of how many? 300 numbered copies. Uh, but also, this is the deluxe edition because of the leather spine and so on. And uh, it's limited to 75 copies. And this is copy number 74. And that's, uh, that's Bob Parker, who, by the way, was one of the funniest people you could ever imagine. <clears throat> when people would say, listen, would you write something in the book instead of just your signature? And he'd say, sure. And it almost always wrote, I based Spencer on you. <laughs> and everybody walked away, showing this to people, said, look, look, this is me. That was Bob. Thanks a lot.